I wonder if we might first of all reflect on 40 years ago, the, the Falklands, of course, were taken back by our armed forces defending a British territory. Do you worry, Lord West, that actually they couldn't do the same thing today? Um, I think that specific case of the Falklands, um, I think we would find it hard to do it, but I think we could still probably do it because we've now got the new aircraft carriers and you need to have aircraft carriers to, to do that operation. But the Argentinians are much less able to capture the Falklands now than they were back then because we've got forces in place down there and we keep a very close eye on them in an mm. intelligence way. But I think referring to the Falklands is important reference because... One of the reasons we know now, because we've seen all the documents, that Galtieri thought he could invade the Falklands was they thought the British were unwilling to fight for something. And also we would decided as a savings measure to get rid of the only ship we had based down there, HMS Endurance, to make the huge savings of £16 million over about 10 years. Um, of course, Galtieri thought, well, that shows they've got no interest in this. So I'll go and invade them. The cost to us, therefore, was £6 billion and 255 men killed. That's what's yeah. happened when you don't invest in defence. Yeah, I wonder what you think, actually, Russia, the example of Russia, where we have boots on the ground in Europe, do you actually think that this suggests that cutting the armed forces, and according to stats from Statista, there's around 148,000 personnel serving in the British armed forces currently. But that number, as you well know, has been in almost constant decline since the end of World War II in 1945. What do you think Russia and Ukraine tell us about the, the future of the armed forces or what you believe the future of the armed forces should actually look like? Well, there's no doubt that dictatorships and uh, people who wish us harm look very closely at what we're investing in defence. And Putin looked very carefully at what Europe was doing in investing in defence. And I have to say, most of Europe's been worse than we have and what we were doing about defence. And we have steadily cut our defence spending over a, a period of years, successive governments. The biggest recent cut was in 2010 when the coalition cut our military by a third. They actually cut the military by a third, a huge cut. Uh, mm. And these things are looked at by people like Putin. And he looked at the fact we were cutting defence. He looked at statements that are made. He looked at the European money spent on defence. And he thought to himself, well, they're not willing to fight. They're not willing to stand up for what they believe in. Exactly the same as going back to what Galtieri thought. And uh, that's why it's important to keep up spending. And although uh, Lord Goldsmith referred to extra money for defence. And indeed, there was a slight uh, boost of money that came in at the end of 2020. That didn't even fill the gaps that had already been made. We have got real, real shortcomings in terms of stockpiles, in terms of the maintenance of equipment, and in terms of numbers. When I joined the Navy, there were 130 frigates and destroyers. We've now got 12 uh, frigates and six destroyers. I mean, that is pretty devastating for a maritime country.